Hello, well met. Welcome to the pregame hangout here for Quadrilateral on the Dungeon Scrollers channel. I am your host tonight for the pregame hangout. As I've said before, uh, Monday evenings is kind of tough for the rest of the team. So instead, you just have a unscripted, unplanned, ask me anything session with me. I'm here to talk about Star Wars, even though I am clearly dressed in the wrong IP stuff including the gauntlet anyway um and we're going to talk about the channel and we're going to um kind of check in about how quadrilateral is going and you know any questions you have just pop them in the chat i promise you i will answer anything within reason first of all does the gauntlet light up the answer is yes this is a this is an omni tool that i uh well actually the batteries are a little bit shaky right now but it does it does light up i'm not i don't remember exactly where i got this but it is pretty amazing um it does have an unfolding claw so clearly this is the omni tool from mass spec 3 um and it is just great a little bit fragile so i'm going to try not to uh hit this against anything um so quadrilateral is our actual play that we've been running for the last couple of weeks. This is episode three that you're going to be seeing tonight. I am, again, not in this episode. I just uh, guest starred in the first episode. Um, the very talented team of players and uh, Jason Collins as our uh, game master storyteller are doing great work. They don't need me. Um, and it is, I'm so excited for all of you to experience it. Um, it is a great story. You probably don't need me to tell you that, but I am going to tell you that anyway. Um, Fearful Symmetry is uh, building to its climax. It's uh, nearing the end. Um, and um, that's been really exciting too. Obviously building off of the original Westgate Irregulars uh, campaign that we ran over the last couple of years. And um, I know Aaron's been really excited to tell this story and it's coming together great and I can't wait to see how it resolves. She does not strictly know how it's going to resolve. She has plans, she has ideas. But like there's still chaos that can happen and you know players will inevitably break the best laid plans. So, we'll see how that resolves. And because we're still waiting to see how that resolves, I can't really say exactly what the future of that particular kind of story constellation is going to be. I would like to return to um, the Westgate Irregulars uh, extended family of characters at some point, maybe run more of the original group, maybe run another related group. Um, I might not even run it. I might play in it. I might just stand back and let uh, all of some of our new talent uh, do so. I don't know. Just it's a great story and I like seeing it continue. Okay, so I see Amanda has showed up like she threatened to uh, heckle me. Oh, yeah, she's uh, reminding us about um, our book that's coming out tomorrow. Yes, did you know I have a book coming out tomorrow? We are the writer stream after all. My book is called uh, Femmes Fatale Bad Intentions. It's a sequel to this one, which you can see up on my shelf right there, which is the first Femmes Fatale book. Um, it's a uh, sapphic enemies to lovers to enemies to lovers sort of story uh, with superheroes, superpowers. Uh, one of whom, one of my characters has uh, fear-based powers. And she absorbs people's feelings and uh, especially fear and transfers them into quasi-real objects and energy blasts and things like that. And uh, the other character is just a really powerful, uh, uh, extremely evil. Okay, okay morally gray but like leaning toward evil uh ceo of a major uh, music label uh sorceress she's one of the most powerful spellcasters in the world and uh they initially met uh because they had both had a relationship with this guy and they were gonna like fight about it but then they realized that that's silly and they have way more chemistry with each other than either of them has with him so now they're having um 
a, a, a topsy-turvy chaotic relationship. And book two is a continuation of that. There are dark secrets, uh, real drama that gets brought up, and it's it's great. You'll love it. Um, it's coming out tomorrow uh, from DEF CON 1, publishing the same person who does all the Cobalt City stuff. Uh, and um, I'm sure I'll you know, should put a link in there somewhere. Yeah, Amanda says that it is a situation ship, which is 100% accurate, and that uh, her character Ruby is the Wicked Witch, and she loves it, all of which is very accurate. All right, let's see. Yeah, I talked about the book. Yeah, it's complicated, indeed. Um, this week... I am trying to put together a last minute D&D game uh, one shot for Wednesday. Fearful Symmetry is going to be off um, because of the holiday and people have commitments. But um, I know a bunch of people who, you know, uh, just like holidays are an excuse for gaming. So I hope to bring a couple of them uh, onto the channel to do uh, d d for uh, everyone here. Uh, so keep your eyes peeled about that. Um, and updates will be coming. Let's see. Other games that have been on the channel that we're going to see return in the future. Uh, if you've been around for a few months, uh, you've probably seen some of our Gray Mantle game that um, was showing on uh, Mondays throughout the summer. And uh, I think, I don't remember exactly the date we ran all of those, but uh, that game is definitely coming back. We have recorded the first episode of arc three and it's very promising uh, we're definitely going to see um those very talented players uh, playing in that very dark and interesting setting um you may have seen that there was no uh, concentration check today that is because aaron is off at a convention uh for her upcoming uh well for her um her book series um empire of exiles is the one that's out now she was signing that one today uh relics of ruin is coming out really soon uh you should see a little um it is that way yes it is that way uh a little thing in the uh, window uh for that you can pre-order that book now uh let's see let's see what else have we got somebody ping me Oh, okay. Yes, uh, there are people who are just haunting the stream coming up with uh, with stuff. And um, yes, uh, concentration check will obviously be returning because um, that's just fun and, and we like doing it. Um, anyone who was around and caught my... Uh, um, <clears throat> my Shadow of the Demon Lord game... Uh, might be interested in more of that game someday. Uh, I am trying to pull together the people who were involved to uh, uh, do a follow-up. Uh, I have a lot more story to tell and a lot more terror to inflict upon my players, uh, as you can all guess. So uh, be hopeful for that. If that's something that you're really interested in, please let us know. Uh, if you're not in the Discord, you probably should be. Uh, you can get a link to the Discord with uh, exclamation point Discord, um, or it's down there in the doobly doo below me. Um, but yeah, we're constantly talking about upcoming shows, things that are showing now. Um, we have fiction that we've written um, because you know we're the writer stream, so we constantly have you know thing um, ideas just flowing out there onto the page, and. Uh, yeah, it's it's a fun time and it's a pretty good community, you know. We're we're um I I have found it very very chill and relaxed most of the time. We also post some really funny memes and stuff, which obviously that's I mean, if you're on Discord and you're not doing that, what are you doing? So, let's see. What else did I want to go over? So, um I've been um I've been playing a lot of Baldur's Gate 3 recently. Uh I'm toward the end of Act 2 with a couple of my characters. 
Uh, and I started act three with one of them. And then that thing happened at the beginning of act three. Those of you who have played the game might know. And I had to sit there and kind of stare at the screen for a while and like, well, well, that happened. And now I'm just kind of, I haven't yet fully emotionally recovered so that I can go back to it. I might get there with another one of my characters. Anyway, it's a really, it's a really good game. And it's, it's a very realmsy game. When you, when you first start out, it can kind of seem a little bit jarring because, well, you're, you're on a nautiloid and you're flying through the un the multiverse through different planes and you're, you know, the first, um, battle part of the game you're in the hells in a nautiloid in the hells fighting off mind flares and intellect devourers and like that could seem not not forgotten realmsy but sort of like very specific forgotten realmsy like D, D has those sorts of things and they are a major part of the forgotten realms but like in a very specific place but as the game progresses and as it goes on i just felt that there that it was more and more of a genuine forgotten realms experience like that's the sort of game that i'm trying to paint when i run the forgotten realms and it's the kind of the kind of feel that i'm looking for when i play in the forgotten realms or read in the forgotten realms or write in the forgotten realms so i think it is a a, a good and worthy uh, successor to those original games, the original Baldur's Gate games, which got so many people into the realms in the first place. And I mean, based on what it's doing on social media and uh, and Twitch and all of these videos that people keep posting and the art that people keep posting and TikToks that people keep posting about the characters and the ridiculous things that they say or do, like clearly, clearly it's going to have the same effect that those original games had. <gasps> Look! A wild Jason has arrived. Woo! Still steam blowing off as I as I rushed in. I've just been vamping for time, man. We're well, we're doing kind of a like kind of an impromptu AMA He's talking about Star Wars and the realms and the channel and, and all of that. I mean, I'm I'm wearing the wrong, you know, IP, right? This is Mass Effect that I've got on, including oh, yeah. the Omni tool. Which That's fair. That's fair. Oh yeah, it's really awesome. Um, Very good. As as the blade too. Oh, as as it should. As it should. So um. Yeah, now that you're here, we can talk more about quadrilateral. Really, please, please. So we're getting we're getting to episode three. This is J L Collins, who's the GM of the quadrilateral game. Um, it's always kind of a crap show to see if he's going to be able to show up on on Monday for the uh, for the hangout because. Well, he's Canadian, and you know things are tough in Canada these days. I'm too commuting nice to, from work. He works nice at a regular no. time. Too nice to say no, and too nice to uh, too nice to just uh, blow everyone off the road as I as I race home, right? So, yeah, seriously, I don't know what's I don't know what's up with that. Oh, am I having little ghost spots appear on my camera again? Huh? Hang on one second. There we go. <laughs> I get these little dust motes on the camera and then it looks like I'm haunted. Which I mean is accurate, but the yeah. ghosts are invisible. Are we so. are we really disputing that as a as a as a state? I don't think so. No, definitely not. Mm -hmm. Okay, so going into quadrilateral episode three. Um how were you feeling when you when you went into this episode? Like Things are getting real, real. Yeah, right? I was both really excited uh, for this episode because, yeah, the the space chickens are coming home to roost, um, <laughs> and uh, and at yeah. the same time, uh, as I we talked about in some of the previous hangouts, right, uh, that uh, that tight timeline that I put myself on um, meant that scenes and and, and sort of um, moments that I thought might have happened in episode two didn't happen in episode two and i needed to push those back to episode three so i knew there was specific moments that i had intended to happen 
And now I had to also make sure that other things that the story kept moving and that we kept going along um, because I uh, was experimenting with a little more time jumping again. And so I had to be in two places at once, um, which was all for all exciting, all super fun. Um, but just at the same time, a, a little tiny bit nerve wracking as the GM when you're wanting to make sure that you um, wanting to make sure that you uh, get get to the point that you need to be at with only one episode to go after this one. Right. So all that all that good stuff. Yeah, because the the final episode you had pretty charted and you needed everybody to be advanced to a particular place yes. in order for all that to happen. Yes. So the, this was a pivotal episode of trying it, to get everything it, in the right it place. It was and and being selfish and not wanting to sacrifice all the <laughs> cool things that, that I had planned to make sure that I got to include all those moments, right? Um, right. So that was uh, that was a big part of it too. Was to uh, still want to be able to hit my 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 sort of my play with my toys. I guess maybe is the best way to put it. Right as a GM, the things that I wanted to um, that I wanted to uh, to show to show and to do and and to let the players experience and uh, and then still get to the mark where I needed to be so that we could hit episode four, the the finale, the climax, uh, and and be and be off and running. Mm-hmm. So in the chat, Rumpus asked, um, how much did it mess up your plans when two of your characters <laughs> yeah. selected not to run from yeah. the security officers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a it's a good question, Rumpus. Uh it's a very good question because yeah, it it didn't mess with my plans, but it changed my plans. And the things that I thought would happen by the end of episode two had to be pushed back to episode three because the group our characters, our our uh, our coming of age uh, children uh, and uh, turned adults were no longer together as a group as I thought they would be, uh, and and still you know absorbing the discoveries of episode two and the things that they had come across. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, so it 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 didn't uh, it didn't mess it up, but it changed it, and that's the joy and the curse of every game master uh, in the world that uh, you have to be able to adapt and uh, and pivot and do a little improvisation uh, as needed but it immediately set up uh the scenes that you're a couple of the scenes you're going to see in episode three were not scenes that i thought would would occur and they ended up happening uh and they ended up being phenomenal because of it and that's the joy of of you know being able to adapt to what you allowing your players to 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 breathe and to do what they want to do and then being able to react to that as the game master and uh, turn it into something uh wonderful um Absolutely. because there's a couple of there's a couple of really great scenes that come of the fact that the group is now split up yeah there's there's one scene in particular that really surprised me that i really did not expect to uh to happen that way because the game is so street level. We've talked about that, right? Yep. Uh, or maybe we could say landing pad level. Like, yes. <laughs> absolutely. We don't have, you know, Jedi and um, lightsaber duels and, you know, uh, space fighting and stuff. So when something happens in this episode, which I'm not going to spoil, it is striking and visceral and just very, mm, and it surprised me. I did not expect it, but I think it's been sufficiently and well uh, foreshadowed and set up by the story yes. that's going through. So I guess that's we'll good. see, I guess we'll see what, um, what everybody thinks when it, when they see it. But that's, yeah, that's why, I'm excited. That's, that's why I'm so excited for this one because, like you said, it's it's a lot of really cool things start to happen, and um, and uh, the the story, like you said, the the pace is picking up, the intensity of of what they're experiencing, um, and uh, we're getting a little bit more into the Star Wars part of our of our Star Wars actual play. So mm -hmm. it's great. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Very cool. So I. Uh... Earlier, I was telling everybody about like um, what we're thinking about doing with stuff in the future on the channel, and um, I may have implied that we might do more Star Wars at some point. 
That that sounds like a poll that Yang Yang should be putting up in chat, I think, is what that sounds like. Well, I mean, we we don't want, you know, people to say, hey, should we do more Star Wars? And, and everyone's vote, like, and they no. No. or they vote, <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> like, <laughs> but like, um, like, what direction would this go if we continued? And And obviously that's going to like, possibly do some spoiling should you <laughs> this is great yang yang is making a very very funny poll it's a very um, very proper poll yeah. <laughs> um just like there are a bunch of different directions we could go um with this if we did more star wars and i don't want you to spoil anything that's going to happen in this episode or, or episode four but like do you have plans? Do you have ideas, like things that you'd like to do? Yeah. Uh, part of going into this, right, doing this four episode limited series, um, you know, just to, to, to tell a, a complete story in a, in a short period of time to just find out, like, do, do we do we end up meeting a bunch of really interesting characters that um, that the first the first people that have to make that decision the players did they enjoy playing these these characters did they enjoy getting to know these characters and did they enjoy forming the relationships with the, with the rest of the group at the same time mm -hmm. i would never speak for our amazing players but i think the answer is a resounding yes because i think everybody had a tremendous time i think that they really enjoyed the characters that they created and began embodied and i think the nobody i think none none of the four of them would, would and maybe yourself as well would agree None of them thought of the, the the relationships that got formed in this story would be as strong and as interesting and entertaining and as meaningful as they have been. Um, and that's kind of, you know, exceeding my expectations as well, because, you know, it's fun just to do some space opera and, and do a little pew pew and have some fun. Yeah. But it's it. But I but I strive for something a little bit more. And I think when we get through episode three now, I think people are going to start to realize that, yeah, we really we really started to create something special. And because of that, there's the bond is there. And I, and I alluded to this, I think when we talked last, last week about, I wanted to tell the story of the prequel. I wanted to tell the origin story, not just a character background where you write off a few lines saying, this is, this is where I came from and what, what how I got here. We're role-playing through that, through these four episodes so that the characters and their motivations and their emotions are so fully formed and so uh, real that the players, it becomes natural because that's, that's the best part when a player just uh, falls into a character and they just know them in and out. Um, mm -hmm. And I think having given the players the opportunity to, to role play their own origin stories, um, I think it only benefits that. And because of that, the galaxy is our oyster and we could pretty much, you know, take the story anywhere we'd want to go in the future. Um, assuming, you know, there's a happy ending at the end of episode four. Mm -hmm. that's a big assumption <laughs> so <clears throat> a lot of I, you mentioned something that I thought was real interesting and we just have a couple minutes left um, this concept of playing through your origin story is really interesting a lot of games don't do that or at least it's just kind of assumed that you don't do that that you like create an origin story you and it could be many many pages long or it could be you know a couple sentences of like my guy's from this town and he wears a cloak and he's cool um right yeah i i tend to err on the side of more right obviously um was that that was an intentional part of you making the story of you planning the story is what you're saying like you went into it with that in mind 100 percent, because i wanted i i didn't want to try and run my first actual play with a group of strangers, some of whom might be playing role-playing Star Wars for the very first time, and then assume that everybody has the same idea of what constitutes the rule of cool and what constitutes their idea of Star Wars and so forth. And it's just, there's there's just so many rich opportunities in my mind to to get little a little taste of it and, and to get exposed to it in, in small moments, but still have this which for me I'm attracted to as, as a game master that day in the life of that that ordinary ordinary world where you you get a sense of who you were before then the extraordinary things start to happen around you not necessarily even to you just around you maybe the extraordinary things start happening to you maybe you're now the cause of the extraordinary things 
all of those things then start to build uh, build up that character and build up that story a little more. Um, and it's just really interesting because, like I said, I think it just I, th- I think there's a much deeper buy-in from the players who are playing these characters, and hopefully there's a much better appreciation from the audience that they that they can sort of say, "I knew that character when, and now I know that character now, and now I know why that character acts this way." And it's not just because oh, they're they're role playing a, a, a you know a tough skinned hard ass. There's a backstory there that's not just a, a background written on a character sheet. It's stuff that was role played through and and and, and and shared and, and the group yeah. uh, together built that. And you certainly can have characters with mysterious backstories, but like there's always a certain tension with a player who's expecting their backstory to come in to affect the game. But yeah. if their backstory is the game, yeah, then you know that's all very immediate and very I, I I think that's a strength of this particular style. And I'm glad that you did it. Uh we gotta we got to wrap and uh, go to our commercial break. So one last thing for the good of the order. Sorry, my friend. Say that one more time. Do you have one last thing to say for the good of the order? Oh, just, I mean, yeah, just just to say that uh, I really appreciate everybody uh, being here tonight to join us. Um, like I said, we are now uh, past the halfway point of the story and um, it's it's a really good one. Uh, and there's there's some really great scenes coming up and the players are doing a phenomenal job um so if you've been enjoying the ride so far we're still you were still click click clicking your way up and now we're about to crest on the roller coaster uh and i couldn't be more excited for it all right thanks uh episode three quadrilaterals coming up in just a couple of minutes don't go away we got to do an ad break uh remember no um, fearful symmetry this week, but we're going to try and put together a one-shot D&D game for this Wednesday. Stay tuned and enjoy. <laughs> 